Is there a way to invest in real estate without having a ton of capital and doing all the extra work that it takes? Yes, there is. And we're going to get into it right after this. Welcome to Framework Fortune. I'm your host, Ben. And if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about the stock market, day trading, building the framework for your financial freedom, start your journey now by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. So in this video, I'm going to be going over REIT. What is a REIT? REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And there's a lot of these companies that are public and they're traded on the stock market just like normal stocks but they don't act like normal stocks and we'll get into all that a little bit later. But first let's get a basic understanding of what REITs are and how they operate. So real estate investment trust own or finance income producing property. Anybody can buy shares of a publicly traded REIT and there are three different types of REITs. You have equity REITs, mortgage REITs, and hybrid REITs. Equity REITs own actual real estate properties they operate and manage, so they make money off of rent. They're nothing but big landlords. Mortgage REITs operate like a mortgage company with mortgage loans. They make money off of interest payments. Hybrid REITs are exactly like they sound. They are a hybrid of both the equity REIT and mortgage REITs, so they make money by being landlords and also being mortgage loan companies, so they get money from rent and get money from mortgage interest payments. Now let's look into the qualifications that it takes for a company to be publicly listed as a REIT. REITs have to invest at least 75% of their assets in real estate, cash, or U.S. treasuries. 75% of income must be from real estate, property rents, interest from mortgages, or flipping real estate. They also must return a minimum of 90% of their taxable income to shareholders through dividends. And this is where you can make a lot of money off of REITs because they usually have higher dividend yields than your traditional stock companies. REITs also have to have at least 100 shareholders and no more than 50% of shares held by five or more people. And this is a great qualification because this cuts down on stock price manipulation and pump and dump schemes and things like that. Now there is some REITs out there that because they have to pay 90% of their income to the shareholders will actually pay extra bonus dividends throughout the year if they're doing really well. So besides the base dividends that you can get off of these stocks, you also are more likely to get those bonus dividends. So now let's go over some of the pros of investing in REITs. And I know some of those qualifications are some pros within themselves, but there's more to it than that. So one of the biggest pros of REITs are they are highly liquid compared to other real estate investments. It can take forever to sell a house and actually get a return. Whereas a REIT, if you're investing in it, you're going to be getting monthly, quarterly or annual dividends from that company as long as they're doing well in a stable market. REITs are also usually more transparent than most companies on the stock market. And because of the qualification of the 90% taxable income being paid out to their shareholders, they should have your interest at heart because the more money that they make you, the more money they can make. REITs are also very steady. In a stable market, they usually don't go down or up too much. They usually appreciate at a very slow rate, but they have higher dividends than your traditional dividend stocks. Now let's talk about some of the cons. REITs usually have slower growth and appreciation compared to other stocks. You're not normally going to get huge moves in a short time on a REIT, but at the same time, you're probably not going to get huge drops as well. So it's a con and a pro at the same time. Another con of REITs is they are taxed at regular income. So if you're not investing in REITs in an IRA or some type of tax shelter account, you will be subject to higher taxes most of the time when it comes to REITs. And as I said before, REITs are risky in unstable markets. If there's uncertainty in the stock market that could cause the housing market to crash, it could cause problems for REITs and you could see some big drops. So now that you know what REITs are and the pros and cons, how do you decide which REITs to invest in? Now, of course, every investor is going to be different and have some type of different strategy, 
but I'm going to go over what I look for. Now, a lot of REITs have a lot of debt, and the reason they have this debt is because they are investing in real estate properties, so their debt is actually making them money. So it's not necessarily a bad thing if they have a lot of debt, but what you want to make sure of is that they have a cash flow. So look at funds from operations, FFO. This measures the cash flow generated by assets. So basically, if they've got a lot of debt and they've got a lot of assets, most of that debt is going to be from those assets. And if those assets are making more money than their debt payments, then it shouldn't really be a problem that they have that much debt. Now, the second thing I like to look at is what are they actually investing in? What is in the REIT's portfolio? And you can find this by just going to the REIT website. Most of them have a way to search through their portfolios and see what they're actually invested in. And towards the end of this video, I will actually go into a few REIT's websites and show you what some of those portfolios look like, so don't go anywhere. Now, because they are risky in an unstable market, the other thing I look for is their cash. How much cash do they have on their balance sheet? If they have a whole lot of cash, it may not be that big a deal in a riskier market. And at the same time, if you're looking at their portfolio, for example, right now we have a pandemic going on. REITs that are invested in medical facilities are going to be more stable than, say, a REIT in the entertainment industry since everybody is quarantined because everybody's at the hospital, so that rent is getting paid, whereas AMC or Regal might not be able to pay their rent right now because nobody can go to the movies. Now, I just mentioned medical REITs and entertainment REITs, and these are just subtypes of the three main REITs, the hybrid, the equity, and mortgage REITs, but not all REITs invest in the same thing. You will have some that invest strictly in medical. You will have some that invest strictly in industrial, entertainment, you know, any type of property that you can think of, there's probably a REIT for it, even residential REITs. So if you're looking for a company that only invests in high-end neighborhood housing, where a lot of the tenants are going to be stable income that will make that rent payment every single month, then you will be able to find that. So if you're new to the stock market, you're probably wondering, how do you actually buy and sell REITs? Well, it's the same process as buying or selling a normal stock. So all you need to do is open up an account with a brokerage like Webull, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, any of those companies. Now, I do have a link in the description for Webull. It is an affiliate link, but if you sign up with Webull to start your account, then you will get some free stocks, and I will too. Now, I don't recommend Webull for day trading, but if you're just long-term investing, especially in REITs or other stocks, Webull is definitely a good one to go with. So I'm not gonna leave you hanging by not taking a look at some of these REITs. So let's jump into some of these REITs and check them out and see what's in those portfolios. So here's the first example, and this is Park Hotels and Resorts, and that's ticker symbol PK. And on their website, you can see they have a map here of where their properties is located. That's pretty nice. If we scroll on down, we can actually see what properties they own and that who they are landlords to. And I love this. This makes me very excited about REITs because you are basically buying into these properties. You know, you're buying into this company that owns these properties and are landlords to these tenants. So by being a shareholder, you are technically a landlord to all these different properties. So right here we have Hilton San Francisco Union Square. That's a pretty big one. Hilton San Diego Bayfront. Park 55 San Francisco, a Hilton Hotel, Doubletree in San Jose, Doubletree Ontario, Hyatt Regency Mission Bay Spa Marina. So as you can see as we're scrolling through this, these are a lot of nice properties. These are higher end hotels. Hilton is known to be higher end. And a lot of these are in some higher end locations like San Francisco and the California area. So you can see 6,400 plus commercial properties, 98.6% portfolio occupancy, and 50 different industries. And you can see their top 20 tenants here, 
Walgreens, 250 leases with them, 403 leases with 7-Eleven, 752 with Dollar General, FedEx, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, LA Fitness, AMC Theaters, Regal Cinema, Walmart, Sam's Club. Look at all this. Like, you don't have to be a billionaire to invest into this type of real estate. So of course, every website is gonna be set up a little different, but spending about five to 10 minutes on the website, you should be able to find out what the REIT is investing in, which means what you're investing in. So for my final example, here is Duke Realty. And this is ticker symbol DRE. And supposedly they have Amazon as tenants. Now I've not been able to find it yet because I've not done as much research on this particular REIT but I'm going to try to find it. So if you happen to find that they have Amazon as a tenant, leave it in the comments below and let me know, put a link or something like that. But we're gonna take a look at some of their properties. But can you imagine having Amazon as one of your tenants being a landlord to Amazon? I mean, if you can't afford to buy a ton of shares of Amazon cause it's real expensive, you probably could afford some shares of Duke Realty and get a dividend from them. So basically you're making money off of Amazon's rent payments. Sounds pretty good to me, but let's check and see what they've got here. So we have a map of the United States where you can see their properties. And it looks like a lot of uh, industrial properties, Rickenbacker Global Logistics Park in Ohio, All Points Midwest Building 12, RGLP Rail 1505, and you can just see these are a bunch of industrial uh, warehouses. So if this video has helped you out, give it a thumbs up. I'm your host, Ben. You've been watching Framework Fortune.